You're listening to the AVIT Amplifier. Each week, we'll feature voices and ideas that need to be amplified in the higher education and pro AV IT communities. This show is brought to you by higheredav.com. And now here's your host, Ryan Gray. Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to uh, another episode of The Amplifier. I am back with my good friend, Robin Bryce, who you heard from last week. Uh, Robin, for anyone who missed last week's episode, hey, one, go back and listen to it. It was awesome. awesome. And you're going to want to hear Robin's enthusiasm and ideas for immersive learning. But two, uh, would you reintroduce yourself? Who are you and what do you do? Um, my name is Robin Bryce. I am special programs manager here at Yavapai College, I'm a project manager. And currently the project that I'm working on is the immersive learning VR XR project that's going on at Yavapai College. That's amazing. And how do we know each other? Uh, because we work together at Yavapai College. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're in the IT department and I'm over here in marketing. I know. Yes. We, we didn't even get into how you ended up in marketing and organized there. That's a whole other thing. Okay. So uh, buckle up. This is the most intense questionnaire in the podcast space. I'm ready. Okay. And I, I think you're going to have some interesting answers to some of those. Okay. Okay. Would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Oh, that's a, that's a complicated answer, actually. Um, so I... On the outside, when I'm at work, when I'm dealing with people, I'm definitely an extrovert. I love to be, <laughs> it's it's my toxic trait. I love to be the center of attention. I think that's why I like to be a teacher because I can like be up on stage and like entertaining in mm -hmm. a productive way. But honestly, at the end of the day, I want to go home and I want to hermit. I don't yeah. like to necessarily go out or hang out with a lot. Every once in a while, as we've seen on, uh, you know, uh, safety meetings, I'll go out every once in a while. But for the most part, I like to, when the day is done, I just want to be at home with my dogs. Okay. So. And you mentioned safety meeting. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> safety meeting. Um, well, we have a once a month uh, get together that um, actually Barrett Johnson over in the tells department and I uh, kind of got started and we have almost 50 people on the invite list and you never know who's going to show up, but we, we hang out uh, downtown after work at the Raven and uh, but, listen to jazz, <laughs> but we call it safety meeting. So it sounds more it's, official. It, so it sounds or? like professional, you know, yeah. safety meeting, you know, yeah. just just in case we like leave work a couple minutes early and we're going yeah. on my calendar is the safety meeting. So no one's building. asking many too many questions. There you go. Perfect. Now you just out it. Now, now we're in trouble. <laughs> JK, JK, I don't leave until five o'clock, Tyler. They're going to know. There's an official meeting set up for the Raven. Yes. Oh, I wonder what sort of meeting. Okay. Never mind. I got a free hat when we came there. Yes. Last yeah. Time, so free hat. That was fun. Nope, no problem. That was great. All right. What was your first job? Oh, um, my first. Oh, okay. My first job was I slung ice cream at a local ice cream parlor um, and banana splits were, were my favorite things to make. But yeah, that was my first job. I mean, technically my mom owned a flower shop, so I guess cleaning flowers for my mom mm -hmm. was really my first job, but maybe she paid me like a quarter of flour or something like that. But my actual first job when I was like 16 was slinging ice cream. Okay. So I get a lot. I love that you said slinging ice cream because that's a great way. So <laughs> Were you like upselling the ice cream? Was it get people into a triple scoop, then a double scoop? Like, Absolutely. You know, you okay. have these kids coming after the baseball mm -hmm. game with their parents, you know, and uh, oh, you just a Sunday. Don't you want to get, you know, exactly <laughs> Sunday and or, you know, you want the nuts. We upcharge for the nut. Uh -huh. No, we don't really. It's no. just okay. <laughs> So were you a commission-based ice cream salesperson <laughs> then, or what was going on here? No, it was just straight. I, once again, I just throw myself into everything that I do. So <laughs> I should have I should have worked on a commission-based salary, though. I <laughs> they're slinging ice cream. Make, I'm rethinking all my decisions in life now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then um, what lessons did you learn at that first job that still uh, just still serve you today? Um, don't eat the product. <laughs> I gained okay. some weight that summer. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you apply that now to work here? Don't eat the VR headsets? Yeah, don't eat the VR headsets. Okay. Um, don't spend too much time in the VR headsets or else, mm. you know, it could be, it could be bad for your for your eyes. You could real. get sucked into get the su matrix. You get sucked in. You're in. We're already in the matrix. It shows us all the time. We'll so how do you, that's a good question. How do you know when you've been in VR too long, when you can't tell the difference between that mm. and reality? Um, I'm, okay. So one of my, one of my, uh, newer VR experiences or one of my, uh, it was one of my first VR experiences was with, um, 
the plank you ever play the plank game mm -hmm. okay so i'm i'm in the game and i'm standing on the plank and i'm looking down and i am very well aware that my feet are on the ground but i could and everyone's like jump jump and i was just like it got to the point where i was shaking and the guy who was demonstrating it to me was like i, I think you've had enough i'm like mm -hmm. I, I think i have um but i don't i don't know i it i how long is too long i think it all just depends on like the person and we're not there yet so it's so real that you can't tell the difference i still can tell that yeah. i'm in the vr world <laughs> you can tell but the emote like you oh, said yeah. there the emotional reactions oh are real it, it yeah so i was just in um i just saw a demo from uh, a company that was for public safety training mm -hmm. and they did some data where they um they tested the the saliva response of people before they went into like an actual shooting scenario and people before they went into a vr shooting scenario and the results were um practically the same like mm -hmm. the the you you get the same emotion it triggers that same sensation that it does whenever you're out there and again i think that that speaks to why vr is so important you can't it's it's dangerous to throw someone in the middle of a gunfight right mm -hmm. um and completely unpredictable but here um you can have control over this like safe environment that truly teaches them how to respond in a in a highly stressful situation because it is so real right and i so i think this gets back to one of the keys of immersive learning we talk about putting people in experiences and it's not just like standing in the louvre when you can't go to the louvre is one thing but why is that important and right. i think the key for me is always remembering it's not about what you see but about how you feel and the brain can, like what you can see it like so we went to we did a tour at asu and they have some very cool things there and there's a couple of experiences where you're in sort of one of them and and a dinosaur sort of thing like there's one where you are full under attack mm -hmm. and one that's more like indiana jones and it's the same like you know it's not real right but the adrenaline reaction is the same yes. the dopamine reaction the cortisol reaction is the same the fear response yeah exactly i would agree with that and i and the fact that you called it an experience because that's what it is you truly you know you're immersed in this like experience and you are sensing it you are feeling it you are you know with haptic technology you're feeling mm -hmm. it you know your eyes are experiencing it you're hearing it uh so it's yeah it's it's very it can be very real yeah yeah for sure and i think that's the key with thinking about it is you know lots of times when people want the the roi or the this or the that or the how no but the what like the the data that people have that show high levels of engagement using these things i think is that level it's because it triggers brain chemicals yeah even if people know it's not real it's being used for pain management it's being mm -hmm. used to help you know uh people you know calm themselves there's a lot of there's a lot of use for it um it's even helping people you know that are in hospital beds and they have to do their their pt it's giving them things to look at and drive drive for it has a lot of interesting uses i encourage people how how Take can we use it ask the question yeah how all right okay <laughs> Okay, if you so let's say uh, an alternate universe, mm. uh, the fractured multiverse, okay. and in the fractured multiverse, you can't work in education, oh. or technology. What would you have been good at? I had have been like a stage performer. I'd have been like on Broadway or something. When I was a little girl, I always wanted to be like Annie. So I would totally, mm. I can't, I can't really sing. I pretend that I can, you know, so I, I don't, you know, I might have been not Annie, but who was the the orphanage director that would have been miss hannigan i think it was <laughs> miss hannigan <laughs> it might have been miss hannigan um but no i think i would have been an entertainer of some kind a comedian uh mm. you know singer I, a variety show i would have had a variety that mm -hmm. nailed it that's what the that, robin bryce hour yes all right so you what can would, see it <laughs> what would we have done what would what would be the format i mean what would you have featured on the robin bryce hour? well i think it had been like very carol burnett we would have done skits we mm -hmm. would have like sung um uh, you know um i don't know it would have been it would just been entertaining it would have been funny obviously i mean yeah. <laughs> i don't know what else do you do on a variety show you entertain people you know bring in guest stars i'd have brought you on my oh, show yeah 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 for sure. right <laughs> for sure we'd, we'd be doing some sort of shtick yes. yes yeah okay all right so on that front then do you do any impressions of anybody <laughs> ah um i don't know if i mean i can do like voices but i don't know if i could they're really like impressions Jeez. like <laughs> like i can do like a little like a little kid voice but it's yeah. just kind of weird and creepy so i was um i I, I work in the film industry a little bit, the independent film, and so mm -hmm. we helped make a movie. It was called Witch Child, and I got to be the voice of the creepy ghost child. Mm -hmm. And um, would you would you like to hear? Yes, a please. <laughs> and she spoke Spanish. All she did was speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, wait, hold on. Hola, mama. Abra la puerta. 
No, don't open the door. <laughs> so yeah, that was that's that's my claim to fame, I guess. You got to do the voice of I the creepy to, child I in got, Spanish. Yeah, it was super fun. <laughs> Muy peligroso. Yeah, it was very dangerous. <laughs> All right. So then if you, let's say you were going to encourage people to attend Yavapai College, but you were going to do it as this child, okay. what might that have sounded like? <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> now you're testing my Spanish limitations like, Pengala. <laughs> Pengala, <YC. laughs> Right, come to YC. Pengala, YC. <laughs> uh, it's our new tagline right there. That be more is gone. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for playing along. No with problem. That. I no appreciate problem. it. You should probably prank call people like that. Yeah. I, you know, I had my days when I was younger prank calling like, is your refrigerator running? Yeah. You better go catch it. Nice. Uh, do people even prank call anymore? You can't. Everybody no, knows. You can't get away with it. You anything. can't. You can't. No. Mm -mm. You got to do better. Kids yeah. don't know. I mean, how fun it used to be. We used to be able to, then Star 69 came and then yeah. and couldn't. The phone it. just rang and you just picked it up. Yeah. Blind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dude. Who? Hello? I don't even Bryce, answer the phone. Bryce Residence. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. No. Right. No. <laughs> no. We don't do that. I don't, if I don't know who's calling me, no. I'm not answering that. Never. Go to And if you not don't leave a message, like. It doesn't exist. Mm -mm. I want to know how I can turn the phone part off on my phone. Right? I just want to be able to text. Yeah. Don't call me. Wait, I'm not. I, a... I'm the text. Hey, need to chat. Great. We'll, we'll set up a time. We'll do it. Right. All right. <laughs> All right. See, we just got to the bottom of something. Exactly. There. All right. Solving Good. problems. Okay. Do you believe that people are generally good with a proclivity for evil or generally evil with a proclivity for good? I think people are generally good. I definitely think that there is more good in the world, that people want to be good. I, you know, we, we all have our, our things that we bring to the table, our, our circumstances that make us behave one way or another. But I don't think people are inherently evil. I think people are inherently good. How do you know? Um, I don't know. Like, because we're people because we're I don't know we're just I want to believe in in that um you know that we want to be the best version of ourselves that we can be and we're really trying to to be that that good version you know sometimes we get in our own way but I think for the most part we're not I mean even serial killers want to get caught you know <laughs> okay <laughs> eventually they just somebody please stop me so <laughs> Oh, so I wouldn't pin my everybody's good answer on serial killers. I mean, you can do whatever you want on that, but that's not the way I would go. That's just a suggestion. Just, just, okay. Well, maybe that just shows that maybe, that maybe I'm a little twisted no, up in good. there. So, so then how does that inform how you move through the world? If, if you look at it and go, you know, when there are things that are challenging, hard, you feel like people aren't acting in, you know, people's best interest. How does a belief that actually technically people are good and they're trying their best inform how you adapt to def difficult situations? That's a good one, right? Um, you know, I think we have to be willing to have honest conversations. And that's still just a, it's a tough one for me. I'm not saying like it's so easy to just talk to people and, and quote unquote confront because confronting doesn't have to be all angry or whatever but it's 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 tough to to talk to people about real talk but i think that it's okay to be real talk i think that it's good to i don't know lead with example i think mm -hmm. that it's you know not necessarily turn the other cheek but just like just kind of continue to be positive and like it's <laughs> sometimes there's people you're just not going to reach right and your positivity actually probably irks them more than anything but that's i found that that's less of a percentage than I, I find more people are just willing to 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 work with other people and willing to give and and um even those that maybe don't want to at the beginning i think that um i don't know with if we all have a common goal and we're all going about it honestly and is the best way that we can and and we're here for a team you know real team effort i think that that helps kind of bring people along you know we're not solo we're not we're not islands you mm -hmm. know, we, we really do do this together and encourage kind of a collaborative, collaborative creativity, that kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> the common struggle is better than the individual struggle. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. yeah. For sure. Let's do it together. All Let's right. figure it out together. So you mentioned there, you, you, you touched on something which I'm kind of interested to delve into, which is maybe you said something about your positivity, maybe not well received by some people or something like that. And, right. and that wasn't a thing you, you as I've known, you seem to it would be high energy and relentlessly positive. Yes. And when you run into people for whom they that strikes them the wrong way, how do you recognize and adapt to it? Um, 
Well, first, I usually call Ryan and say, dude, someone doesn't <laughs> like me. <laughs> no, but I think, again, it's about like um, understanding where the other person is coming from, right? You can't, it's not all about me. I do not walk through this world by myself, right? Uh, communication is half what's intended and half what's received. Mm -hmm. And so um, understanding where the other person is coming from, what their needs are, what motivates them, I think helps. And sometimes I can go into a meeting and be me where I'm just like, -da 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 -da. and sometimes I have to go into a meeting and say, okay, well, we have all gathered here to, um, so just understanding your audience, understanding who you're working with, you willing being adapt. I, I can't control what other people say, do, think, feel, respond. But what I can do is I can control how I, what I say, think, feel, and respond. And so instead of trying to change other people, adapt myself to that situation. And hopefully that, uh, it's, it's about understanding people. Again, it's about those relationships, man. You can do mm -hmm. anything with relationships. So yeah. that's, yeah. And, and Ryan's advice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I, you, you can stop. You know, it's our, I appreciate that. But right. I think part of the key with that is, you know, if, if there's any advice I have, it's only from the same, it's about pulling smart things I've seen other people do over time yeah. that have been effective and right. replacing those. And I think everybody, we, we kind of owe that to each other mm -hmm. to, to help. And someone who understands that relationships make or break business process yeah. is a key thing. Sometimes in the field of, especially in technology, right? There are, there's a little bit of the thought that like, you know, technology or the, the material of work drives process and we can lose sight of the human side of things, right? Like, it doesn't matter how somebody feels about it, right? A 10 step process and just move through it. Right. And the idea that how people feel about that 10 step process is going to say far more about the success of the project than how great the 10 steps you wrote were. I, I would agree with that 100%. I, I definitely think that you have to have your your team, your people on board, um, informed, comfortable, all of that. You know, you're not going to get everybody all the time. You know, you may always have like a, a naysayer, but putting some time into making sure that people feel comfortable with what is going on or just not just acknowledge they don't even have to like necessarily agree with it but treat them like their partners in in this and um i think that's one of the things that i really enjoy doing is i i really don't make a lot of decisions without talking to a bunch of people first and even though ultimately i get to make the final decision i think it's really important to hear what other people have to say because yeah mm -hmm. they they have some expertise that i don't or they have a perspective that i didn't think of um and and I just think that working with people and, and valuing people um, is really important to move projects and processes forward. Well, how dare you try and work in such a collaborative fashion? <laughs> it's It's been pretty productive, I have to say. Word. All right. <laughs> so you mentioned before uh, when you need to un unwind or at the end of a long day, you'd like to be home with, uh, with so tell us about your pets at home. Yay. So I have Bodie, the ghost face killer. She's like 15 <laughs> years old and her face is just completely white. She is... Uh, um, half part greyhound and part uh, Catahoula, like hmm. leopard dog, super cute. And then Bindi, I got Bindi because Bodie was getting old and I was like, oh, I, I want something to A, to ease the heartbreak and maybe mm -hmm. to learn because Bindi is such an awesome dog. She's a super, or Bodie's such an awesome dog. Um, so I got Bindi, who is a Basenji and a Pitbull mix. Mm -hmm. And um, they're both super adorable. They're, they're Brindle and they're my Brindle babies. And Bodie has even got some life back in her because Bindi is around and Bindi he's four years old now and they're yeah. my sweet babies they like they're athletic dogs they like to go hiking and you know walking and, and snuggles oh my gosh such big snuggles <laughs> so it sounds like maybe they are part of your understanding of self-care your own self-routine yeah these dogs are involved in some yes way. You, yeah you have to you have to take care of yourself right eating right exercise and sleeping right i have no problem sleeping sometimes i skip on the uh exercise i need to you know treat myself better but the dog's knowing that they need to go outside definitely helps. Plus we got this like really cool pond thing that they just built down the end of my street. So the dogs like to go around and chase the birds that, that get, I keep them on a leash. They're always on a leash, but mm -hmm. they always want to chase the birds. So, nice. Yeah, they're my snuggle pups. So they get you out and about yes. and produce good brain chemicals. Yeah, yeah, relax. right. Get that, exactly. That serotonin and the, 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 what's the other stuff that comes out when you exercise? serotonin endorphins. endorphins endorphins yeah you need those endorphins yeah yeah a little dopamine little dopamine get yes. that little dopamine <laughs> shot good, right 
instead of burger and fries, it's a walk with the dogs. I mean, I know, there you go. right? Take self care. It's so important. Burger and so fries important. is still kind of good though. Isn't it? Well, yeah. good burger and fries, not McDonald's burger and oh, fries, no. but like uh -huh. homemade. You know, like mm -hmm. from a good like local establishment or homemade. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. I love making my own like sweet potato fries. There you go. Mm -hmm. All so right. Good. So tell everyone how you make your own sweet potato fries. I, I cut up sweet potatoes and I put them in the air fryer. Nice. Well, <laughs> it's perfect. Some, with some seasoning. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Tell me about your best life hack or pro tip. Oh my gosh. My <laughs> what would be my best life hack? I don't even know if I have a best life hack. Um, okay. This is just because I'm I'm drinking vats of it right now. Um, I've come back around this. I don't know if this is really the best one, but this is what I'm enjoying at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um Drinking bulletproof coffee in the morning helps me cut down my sugar cravings throughout the rest of the day. So when I get stressed out, I don't like reach for candy. I feel a little bit better prepared to handle my my cravings. Mm -hmm. So that's my bulletproof coffee. Do you know what bulletproof coffee no. is? It's coffee with like I put ghee and um, uh, coconut oil in it and maybe some cinnamon in there. But um, it's like the fat. Apparently, like yeah, of, yeah the fat's supposed to be good for your brain mm -hmm. and get your brain like get some good omega threes. Yeah, get so it gives me that and it keeps me kind of full throughout the day. So then I have a little bit of a uh, I could stand to use a little. What is it? It's, um, when you stop eating for a moment, intermittent fasting. Yeah. yeah. So it helps me like not eat between like late at night and then like early afternoon. Okay. Yeah. That's, right. my, that's my life hack right now. Bulletproof coffee. Bulletproof coffee. I mean, it's like old everybody, you know, it was, I was into it for a minute and then I put it down and then I picked it up again recently. And I was like, why did I ever stop with you? Because you're amazing. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> only you understand me, bulletproof coffee. <laughs> You'll always be my friend. You'll always be my friend. <laughs> okay. Ready? Here's your choice. Okay. Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Adele, or Beyonce? Oh, Beyonce. Bay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why? Dude, she sings the songs of my heart. Have you just said Tay Tay? I'd have probably gone with uh, Taylor Swift. I, but, I did not put her on the list because I felt like it would be unfair. Yeah, it was, it's totally unfair, right? Okay. Um, um, but yeah, uh, Beyonce, I just, you know, she's just awesome. And, she, you know, she stands by her man, but also is like, uh, you done messed up. I'm just letting you know, like, we're sticking together, but um, mm -hmm. I see you. I see you. <laughs> so <laughs> I just like her song, you know, they just... Because me, I don't know. Just like to bop to him. She's a bop. She's always got. She's always got some good songs. Uh, always a bop. Always a bop. Banger after banger. Banger after banger. All right. So, right. what are the one? What's like? What gets your adrenaline up? Which Beyonce song? Um, love's coming, look at so crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Nice. Look at so crazy and love's coming. You can get me looking so crazy in love. <laughs> Because uh, I'm crazy in love, yes. <laughs> okay, good. I don't know if we have enough to clear the song. I don't know if that's enough. To, I'm uh, sorry. No, I'm just kidding. It was po no. bad singing. They would Nobody. never. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was awesome. I, I think you may be the first guest to have named Beyonce out of that list. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so you're an original Ooh, on that front. Oh, OG. I know. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, 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 Beyonce, solo Beyonce only? Or mm. does this go back no. into previous Des iterations? Destiny's Des Des Child's totally, totally... Uh, um, counts yeah definitely mm -hmm. destiny's child definitely counts okay. um yeah um like gosh we got me now i gotta name some songs can you pay my bill that's pretty good thank you <laughs> Yeah, see, you, see, you got it. You know. <laughs> I just been soon sing songs for the rest of this. And usually when I record, I can't do that because you're doing it remote uh -huh. and the timing never works. To right? sing, but we're in the same room. We're, we could do it. We could sing done together. That. I know. Nice. That's we awesome. Should have, we should start a podcast where all we do is just like sing songs. Oh, my God. I don't know if I would be very popular. <laughs> We'd have fun doing. We it, would though. totally have fun. We would have like no listeners, but we would enjoy it. Okay, you you're totally right about that. Um, maybe so, some German listeners, like you know, they like Hasselhoff, and maybe I don't know, is he a good musician? Hasselhoff? Yeah, I, I don't know. David Hasselhoff is like a, he's like they love him in Germany apparently. So like uh, maybe I, I'm assuming it's bad music. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm gonna get the Germans are getting mad at me right now. I'm sorry. Don't <laughs> have you read history? You don't want the Germans no, mad at no. you for too long. <laughs> That's a joke. I know. I'm just kidding. That's bad. Erase all this. <laughs> it's all going in. Okay. So, all right. You get, you, let's say you get a pretty big budget to do it with. Okay. Book a vacation. Oh. Where, where are you going with who? Why? Mm, okay. Italy. Um, I am a quarter Italian, but like my whole life, I've known my Italian side of my family more than anything. And my great grandmother was from Calabria. No, Cosenza. And my great grandfather was from Calabria. And I would love to go to 
Calabria and Casenza. One's in the heel and one's on the boot. Mm. And just go, you know, see where where my family came from. My grandmother and I were going to go a few, like, well before she, you know, took ill and passed away. She was like, let's take a trip. And I kind of never took advantage of it. And it's, you know, might be one of those regrets that I have. So I would like to fulfill that. That's that's where I'd like to go. Italy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we could go to other places in Europe, but Italy sounds sounds really cool to me. So really about making connection to family history. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's really some cool places to see at Scotland. I'm Scottish. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be really cool. Maybe buy a little piece of property in Scotland. I hear you can like buy like a like an acre, or like a yard or something like that and be a lord or a lady. I don't really interested in that. But going to Scotland, would be, excuse me, would be really cool. And I'm German. So going yeah. to probably Germany a little bit would be cool. All right. And I'm Swedish, too. I guess Swedish would be cool. So you got the full Europe quadrangle yeah, just that, put that's, together. That's what I'll do. I'll just go on like a European, like, you know, mm -hmm. lineage tour. I like that. Yeah. How much How much land do you have to have to be a lord? I think it's just like a yard, like a three by three square. Like you can, they, I, they were doing it there for yes. a minute. You can like go online. Anybody who's uh -huh. listening, go online and look. You can buy like a three by three square and you could be like lord. I want that. You know, yes, right? Lord Grey. Okay, what would you put on your three by three square? Oh, oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like a little gnome home. Yeah, <laughs> a little a, something. Yeah, a little, little gnome home, little little mushroom shaped gnome home and, you know, put a little, I don't know, little camera in there and watch. Oh, I, oh, it would be something, that would be cool. Something technology, mm -hmm. like interactive that people would like walk up to it. A geocache of some kind. Mm -hmm. I think a geocache would be really cool to put on my property. Like, yeah. right. Have you seen the geocache that they have here in town? It's over there in Acker Park. And like at the end of it, apparently mm -hmm. it's like a really cool game. I'm not going to give away like okay. what it is, but it's like a really cool thing that you get mm -hmm. to do like at the end. It's like Raven something, Raven something geocache. Uh -huh. It's apparently very cool. Find it in Acker Park. Find it in Acker Park. Uh, yeah, you can get the app, like geocaching mm -hmm. app. And find yeah, it. we've done those. Yeah, we yeah, found yeah. some stuff in weird places. Yeah. Like just under a random rock, yeah. and there it was. There it was, right there. Yeah, there's some cool geocaches around Prescott, for sure. I love that stuff. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Okay, uh, last three questions. Okay. Same last three questions for everybody. Okay. Uh, uh, third to last. What is a question that you wish people would ask you, but nobody ever does? Uh, um... Would you like a stick of gum? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have gum. Would uh, you like gum? Is it a stick, though? No. no. It's cubes. No, see, no. It's, it's, nobody has sticks of gum anymore. They don't. They just have the little chewy things that come in, like, containers. I want, like, yeah. the juicy fruit or, like, the double mint. Okay. Remember the double your pleasure, pleasure double, double your fun, fun with mm -hmm. double mint, okay. double mint. Now I know why you're in marketing. Yeah, <laughs> I remember them all. Mm -hmm. We did when I was in like fourth grade. We did like a, a chorus performance. You know, one of our chorus performances, and it was all jingles. I have so many jingles stuffed up inside my head. Mm -hmm. Nestle's and Oscar Mayer, and but they're designed to worm their way in there. They right? never leave. I think I think people people like in that sort of product marketing jingles are the most like in depth psychologists yeah. ever. Because they figured out how to right. make their thing unforgettable. Uh, you know, you asked me earlier, what job, did you ask me what job I would have? Did mm -hmm. you ask, I, I take it back, jingle writer. I, because yeah. I sing all the time. I mm -hmm. sing things. I'm like, this is a microphone and it's sure, <laughs> it's <so> awesome <laughs> with your MacBook. Yeah. <laughs> it would be much better than that. But yeah. So you're kind of living in your own musical every day Always. inside your head. There's a soundtrack that just plays. Like when mm. I walk into a room, it's like, Robin's here. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> It's like Peter Griffin, you know, when he's got that. <laughs> <laughs> so that that could be there's your podcast right there, yeah. which is Robin's musical, right? Robin's daily musical going right. through life as a musical. <laughs> yeah. You're on top of the world. Someone give me some ham. <laughs> Oh my God. We're getting off the rails. I know, now. right? That's good. You brought it up. <laughs> don't, or wait, maybe don't I put did. this on me. Who do you think? You are? Oh, I said I was a jingle writer. I think I started it. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So, so from the question, uh, what do you want to be asked that you're not stick of gum? And the real question now is going to be what's the song? In, you know what I mean? What's the song in your head right now? So, from now on, when I see you, that's going to be, you that's know what I'm it. saying? What are you singing to yourself at what the moment? What am I singing to myself? Okay. Good yeah. to know. I'll hold you to that. 
and I'll, I'll start busting it out, you know? I feel like my day would just be clicking yes on the next Zoom call, clicking yes on the next Zoom call over and over and over. Right. What are you going to do? It's, it's hey, that's kind of part of the job. I've never had so many mm -hmm. meetings. But I love it, though, because, again, like, I get to hang people, out with people, people right? People. Most meetings I enjoy. There are very few meetings that I'm like, ugh, mm -hmm. I have to meet with this person. Yeah. It's very few. Very, yeah. very few. I would if, agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Second to last question. Okay. Again, if people wanted to. The penultimate question. The penultimate question. Yes. If people wanted to make contact or collab or are pumped about anything they've heard from you, how would they find you? Um, you can contact me through my email. That's robin.bryce, R-O-B-Y-N dot B-R-Y-C-E at Y-C dot E-D-U. That's probably that the correct. best way to get a hold of me. There's a Y in the first name, a Y in the second name, and a Y in the uh whatever comes after the at. Right. And uh, I'm in IT. You see how bad an IT person I am? Okay. And like, and the domain name. The domain name. It was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, just make sure you got a Y in the each Y's, of them and you'll the get Y's it right. The Y's in each of them. You got it right. Exactly. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last question. Okay. Um, uh, My setup for this is the worst. I should just start cutting the setup out okay. every time. But old old style newscasters okay. used to have their own sign off phrase right oh, good night okay. and good luck yeah, yeah and or you know what is your like at the end of your because your show you know what I mean, you want to be a performer right so what is the drop the mic sign off at the end of the robin bryce variety show uh, <laughs> um uh have a good day and don't go losing your pants <laughs> Thank you for listening to the AVIT Amplifier. Join us again for next week's episode when we'll welcome a new guest who you'll want to hear from. We promise. Your host has been Ryan Gray. He's on the tweeters at Ryan underscore A underscore Gray or find him on LinkedIn to connect. Please subscribe and give the show a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. This show is brought to you by HigherEdAV.com. The views expressed here are not necessarily those of our respective institutions, employers, or sponsors. Everyone hang in there, go easy, and we'll be back next week.